Good to have you still with us here on The Breakfast. And, of course, a uh, continuing conversation with regard to security. Yesterday, we started this discussion and, uh, of course, uh, shared with you the DSS uh, sharing a warning and alleging a plot to incite religious violence in Lagos, Kano, and other states across Nigeria. It was also a warning to religious bodies to be on the lookout for certain elements around them uh, that might, of course, be trying to create problems. We've invited this morning Mr. Bestman Nze. Uh, with uh, the uh, Outfit Alternative Security. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. It's my pleasure being here. All right. I'm going to just start with, uh, let's get, first of all, get your thoughts um, on a story like this. When the DSS puts out a security warning like this, how does it, you know, um, hit you? And uh, what is your quick reaction to it, first of all? Well, um, I will not pretend to have all the information um, that the DSS have, but I am not a fan of um, the release of such information. The DSS are supposed to be a very covert institution, and once they have this information, I expect them to strike, and I expect them to, to use the intelligence they have to work. Not, I don't believe in this... Um, well, I see something I see that's grandstanding. I don't I don't believe in it. Hmm. It's, it might be true, it should be true, but I think as a covert institution is an intelligence meant for them to act on. So now they got wind of this intelligence that there might be a security threat in some states, you know, Sokoto, Kaduna, Lagos, and um, among other states. What should be the steps that they are supposed to take, you know, if they're not supposed to release this information to the public? What should they do? Um, security steps are not um, are not steps that we should discuss over the dining table, nor we should bring to the to public glare. The the DSS are equipped enough to take actions, and they will take it. All we see, we will see the results. When the results come out, they will tell us what they did and why they did it. I don't think it's right for them to tell us this is going to happen and this is what we want to do. And I know they won't do that. So, but the moment the DSS starts telling you the steps they want to take, they are already giving the the, um, the those planning evil opportunity to to reply. Okay, but but the the it's it's not you know peculiar with the DSS. It's not you know just um, here in Nigeria. The FBI, if you are aware, also recently released a warning. Um, with regards the possibility of armed protest and uh, you know attacks at uh, uh, president elect Joe Biden's inauguration and so um, I'm sure that they might also have information that they're working with but still decided to go ahead and put the information out there uh, so you know yeah. do you think that the DSS can do both can they put out the warning to get Nigerians uh, to be aware and to be on the lookout and at the same time still be working behind the scenes to ensure that none of these things uh, happen, like they've uh, like they've warned. We operate we operate in a space where trust trust is in the deficit, so we've got to be very careful how we how we um, juxtapose our own situation with that of the United States of America. You'll be amazed that when the FBI releases an information, they've done about 30, 40 percent, 50 percent mm -hmm. of the work before they even release the information to you. We are in a situation where we have seen a lot of these informations in Nigeria, and sometimes it is political, and sometimes it is what I call grandstanding. But I'm not saying that's the real, that's what DSS is doing now, no, because I think the present DSS have upped their game a bit, and I give them a bit of kudos. But the truth is, I, with my little training and the training I have, I do not believe in the release of intelligence except mm -hmm. you have done a lot of work on the ground before releasing it, which I wouldn't know about the DSS for now. But by benefit of hindsight, as we knew before, it wasn't happening that way. Now, this security alert is peculiar because according to the DSS information, the one they put out, they're saying that the target of these attacks would be religious centers and religious uh, leaders. Is there any cause of action that the uh, you know, religious leaders can take? Is there anything they can do to forestall such attacks you know, uh, in, in, their, in their centers among their members? Um, sometimes we also need to check the 
use of appropriate words. Mm -hmm. There might be um, mm -hmm. there might be tensions, religious tensions. There might be um, statements that could um, hit up the polity in the area of religion. But to say there will be a religious attack in Lagos, it's going to be, it would take a lot for that to happen because. We know the areas that are volatile to attacks. To say that the religious attack in the southeast or south south, it's something that um, might just be alien to us. But if we say that the religious attacks in the areas that we know that have a history of it, yes. But so, it's not just Lagos. In, it's Sokoto. It's Kano. It's Kaduna. It's Plateau. Yes, it's Rivers. That, it's all your yes, state. Not said. just Lagos. We have areas that have a track record of attacks. Sokoto, here yeah, the northern. The northern part. So the steps that will be taken in those areas will be different from the steps mm -hmm. taken in a place like Lagos or the south or the south south. So, but for the benefit of doubt, I think the authorities have received this intelligence, and I'm sure they are acting on it already. Like I said, we do not forestall the security plans publicly. We don't. We don't say it publicly on the plans to forestall such attacks if there if there be any at all. Hmm. All right. Um, and just like, you know, one of the things that we brought up yesterday, um, you know, I, I'm always trying to understand what the you know, possible goal, you know, would be here for those elements who, you know, if the DSS um, um, warning uh, is uh, true, um, what you know, is the likely goal for these elements that are trying to create the religious crisis in Nigeria today? Uh, you know, we, we well, are, have gone through, you know, you can't quite take a lot. Away politics from everything in Nigeria now. Um, we have a situation where the allegations that even the banditry that we are seeing now are being sponsored, in quotes. We have a situation where we, um, we hear that even the kidnappings have a political undertone. Now, so if we are going to have um, religious violence or religious skirmishes in different areas, if at all, that means it will have political undertone, either to discredit the government mm -hmm. or to whip up sentiments against maybe the ruling class or the political, where they have political differences. It's going to have political undertone. Mm. Now, how or what would you say would be the role of religious leaders, traditional leaders in you know, preventing such an attack because we know that they both we're talking about Christianity and is the religion of Islam. They're both you know advocating for peace. So how can religious leaders step in here, you know, to speak to members of the community, members of you know the residents of their states, to make sure that we're all on the same page here, you know, advocating for national unity and cohesion. Okay, about um, roughly ten years ago, I raised an alarm. When um, the religious heads, or let me say the clerics, the pastors, for example, started using their pulpit for religious, I mean, for political um, innuendos, they started going on the pulpits to preach against this politician, this party. Now, from that time till now, things have not been the same again. Um, the religious leaders, the, poli um, the traditional institutions, are meant to foster peace and unity because the, 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 the religious um, institutions are supposed to be crowned on the pillar of truth in Nigeria. They're supposed to be the ones putting us in check. But the moment mm -hmm. they compromise and start being a bit of partisan, I mean, we start seeing a bit of partisan partisanship with them, we have a problem. So my advice is that now they should now retrace their steps. The traditional, traditional institutions mm -hmm. should do the needful because they are closest to the people. Orientation, mass mobilization is key. And use the pulpit, use the um, the mosques to teach the people about unity, about peace, and about oneness. Because if we allow these things to escalate, when brothers fight to death, um, visitors, strangers come to inherit their properties. And so, you know, what what, what um, you know would you also expect from citizens at a time like this when we hear of a warning like this? Um, what is the DSX expected, expecting citizens to now start doing? You know, are, are there certain steps that must now be taken by Nigerians um, across the country? Um, you know, and how can we also improve on you know, the security information that we get to exchange with the, 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 the DSS and with the security agencies? 
Um, let's quickly talk about that before we wrap up. You know, it, still, it still boils down to the, um, the issue of deficits in trust. Because um, in, a, in, a, in a setting where people trust the institutions, with this um, alert, we are supposed to monitor our environment. We are supposed to keep our ears to the ground. We are supposed to watch more so that any little information we have, we take it to the appropriate authorities. We take it to the to set up places where information are gathered. But Nigerians are so scared that if I go give information now, how am I safe? How am I sure I'm safe after the information I give? So I think it's time we we, we built up the uh, trust our uh, trust scheme so that people can can really believe in the system and have the ability to and have the freedom to come to offer information and those information. The, the DSS will use it, gather as intelligence, and act to preempt the activities of these of these uh, negative people. All right, um, I think that's uh, most of what we'll be uh, discussing this morning. Uh, we hope, you know, like you've said, that the DSS, you know, will take all necessary actions, um, even you know the actions that will be taken in in secrecy that Nigerians may not be aware of, and you know, help continue to keep Nigerians uh, safe in its entirety. And of course, the religious leaders also, you know, are encouraged to continue to preach a message of peace all the time um, um, as we go on, you know, with our dear nation, Nigeria. Thank you very much, Thank you. Best Man, uh, for your time. Thank you for speaking with us. Looking forward to another conversation with you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Just, just, you know, so much, you know, of all of this, you know, that, that uh, bothers, you know, me in particular. And, you know, it's one of the things that I brought up yesterday, you know, how... We can still have, and it, maybe it's not just a Nigerian thing, you know, yeah. but we can still have um, religious sentiments on a level where they can still be used to incite violence, um, you know, at our stage, you know, when the, the rest of the world is moving into, you know, technology and moving into um, electric cars and thinking about how they can even go to space. Technological you know, still, advancements. We're still, you know, still, yes. still so, you know, at, at that place where you can still um, convince somebody to carry out vi violence um, because of his religion or her religion. So it, it, it still, you know, breaks my heart a little bit, you know, and the fact, you know, that we still have not been able to have successive Nigerian governments that have been able to completely unite Nigerians, um, um, completely, uh, basically, yeah. um, breaks I, my heart. You know, I, I think, you know, this just uh, reminds me of the conversation we had uh, just last week about propaganda, because... These people, most of them, you know, they are convinced to fight these ethno-religious wars or, a, or basically stir up ethno-religious crises based yeah. on a false propaganda, a mixed up, you know, view or idea of a certain religion. I don't know how that works out, but, you know, we talked about how the National Orientation Agency and religious leaders need to actually step in and, you know, counter that disinformation, because that's basically fake news. That's disinformation. Yeah. Counter that disinformation. And also one very important point to mention, how political um, religious leaders will go on the pulpit and talk about politics. I don't think, the, you know, the podium of, of a church should be used to discuss I think, politics. I think there can be a balance. There, could, I don't there think, should be a balance, yeah. but when it comes to taking sides, I mean, are you saying that the other political party doesn't have a God, or God doesn't answer the prayer of the, of the other political party? I think it should basically be about, you know, conversations about peace, conversations about national unity, and not taking sides, even like uh, we discussed with um, the Ohanese Indigo rep uh, just a few minutes well, ago. All right, so that's a total, we would, we would maybe create time for that one, it's a big conversation. Thanks anyway for uh, joining us so far. Um, coming up next, we're talking about the under-17 Nigerian uh, team, the uh, sports correspondent, Wally Scott, will be joining us next, just before we wrap up the program, there's still a little bit more right after sports, but don't go anywhere. <laughs>